Hello there, Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about the PL400 Power Platform Developers Exam. So this is this is the exam for you uh, if you're wanting to learn how you can sort of extend out the Power Platform using sort of pro code extensibility. So uh, today's video follows on from the previous one where we were looking at how we can work with solutions. Uh, in this one we're going to actually focus our attention towards a specific tool uh, that you will need to be having awareness of and know how to use as part of um, the skills measured for the exam. It's called the Solution Packager Tool. It's something that's available as part of the SDK. Uh, and what it essentially lets us do is it gives us a mechanism to be able to sort of decompose uh, our solution files into the raw files that they sort of comprise of. And these will typically be XML files and things like that. Why do we want to do that? Well, in most cases, we may want to put them into a source control system. Um, it may be that once they're in a source control system, we want to basically take them and package them up again. So the solution packager lets us do all of this really, um, and it's our go-to tool when we're working from working with solutions from a source control standpoint. So what we're just going to do a demo today, show you how you can get started with the tool, show you how you can use it to unpack a solution and pack it back up again. And to do this, we're going to use our PL400 demo solution that we have worked with in the previous video. So just got a few tables in there at the moment, nothing too fancy. Um, we're just going to export this out first of all. Uh, we're going to make sure it's exported out as an unmanaged solution um, in order for it to work with our um, solution packager tool. And we'll give that a second just to download. Okay, we've got our solution file down here. Uh, and what I want to do first of all is I'm going to open this up into um, a downloads folder. Um, and I'm just doing this on the other screen. Um, I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to move it to a dedicated directory where we're going to sort of work with it a bit further in a, in a second. So click on this um, solution package demo folder up here. I'm just going to paste the solution in there ready to sort of go and then click back and go back onto here. Now, next thing we want to do is we want to open up a command prompt window. Um, so my tool of choice to be able to help us with this today is something called Windows Terminal. Um, I'll put a link in the video just so you can download and check out this tool for yourself. But it's really great at being able to let you run both PowerShell and command prompt type commands using a single interface. So the first things first, we want to change into the directory, into the drive that we're working with. So in this case, the D drive. And it's going to run a CD command just to basically check, get into our PL400 uh, folder that we've been working with. Uh, next thing we need to do is we want to run a set of PowerShell scripts that's going to download the SDK tools that we want to work with. Um, now, the script is quite a big sort of script. Uh, it's actually um, made available by Microsoft. So again, check, there'll be a link now in the video that you can use to basically go to that and access that quickly. All it does is basically it goes out into NuGet and downloads all of the various SDK tools that we want to be able to work with. Um, so a really useful uh, script to have uh, in hand. Um, so to run this script, all we want to do is just want to run a command on here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this from another screen. It's a PowerShell-file and then the location of our script. I'll hit return on that and that's going to invoke a PowerShell se session and start the process of being able to download all of the various different SDK tools. This can usually take a couple of minutes, um, so we'll just uh, monitor this as it goes through now. And come back in a second. So the script has finished running. If we were to go it, look at our folder on here, we can see that we've got a new folder down here called Tools. And in here, all of our various SDK tools, some which we'll cover again later on in the series, but the main one that we're concerned with, our package um, solution packager tool, is in the Core Tools folder down here. You can see we've got an executable down here. Now, typically, we'd want to call this executable with the various options that we want, and we typically always want to do this probably via um, command prompt again. So again, if I get our Windows Terminal uh, window back up again, uh, I want to just uh, change my directory back into our into the Core Tools folder that's downloaded. Uh, and then from here, I can actually run um, the first command, which is going to extract out our solution files uh, into their raw contents. So I'm going to copy and paste this from um, another screen. So just to explain what we're doing, so we call solution package.exe. Our action is that we want to extract out our solution file. Um, we give it the location to where the zip file is. Um, so in this case, it's in our solution package demo folder. And in this case, we want to expand it out into a folder within solution package demo called PL400 demo solution. So I hit return now. Um, it's a very small solution file, so it actually takes, um, it's very quick to basically run in this case. And then if we just navigate back up to solution package demo, 
we can see in here we've got a brand new folder PL400 demo solution and when we start to inspect on here we can see the various objects that have been extracted out so because we've got the account contact and task tables in our solution that's what gets added in and as we go into here we can see the components that have been extracted out so in this case because we've got the main form we can see we've got our main form definition down here so if I open this up with just with uh, notepad plus um, plus we can inspect the raw contents of all of this the advantage being that now it's in an XML format if we were to incorporate it as part of our source control system if for example we were to change the name of let's say a label on the form that that change and that change alone would be reflected as part of our commit history in source control so pretty much all of the main um, contents of um, of the internals of a solution file will be XML. There may be some variations, so maybe that sometimes your plugins, for example, uh, will be in there as the sort of the DLLs. It could be that maybe your JavaScript and your HTML web resources as well could also be in there. But for the most part, you've got most of your base details, uh, and typically details about the solution and itself will be stored in solution.xml. So again, we can have a quick look at that on there, so we can see PL400 demo solution all the details that we've added in about our particular solution and our publisher etc um, and then the details regarding our customizations that we've performed will be in customizations.xml so because we're not added in any tables or any columns or any fields or anything like that then this is all empty at the moment this will generally expand out as we um, as we do further work with our solution So with all that sort of extracted out then, so it could be that maybe in the future you want to basically get this bundle up again so we can actually deploy this out into our into a new Dataverse environment. So first, to, in order to do that, first of all, I'm just going to delete this uh, solution file down here. Uh, we don't need that anymore. And then we're going to return to Windows Terminal. And again, we, could, there's a set of, we run a separate set of solution packager uh, commands to basically get that all uh, sort of deployed out. Um, I'm just, just notice there's a slight typo at the start of that script, so let me just uh, remove that like so. Um, and the only changes that, that we've got this time around, argument wise, is that we wanted to just do a pack action um, instead. And we fed in an additional argument uh, for uh, package type. Uh, in this case, we want to be able to extract out um, both our managed and our unmanaged solution. So I'm just putting a colon on there because I think I've missed that out there. So let's just run that and see what happens. Uh, no, I think that might have been wrong. Let me just try again like that. Okay, uh, just go pause the video back in a sec. Okay, we're back. So the issue with running the both command in this uh, particular case is that because the folder has been extracted out as unmanaged, we can't actually then extract that and pack that up as a managed uh, zip file. Um, it has to be unmanaged so instead the command that we need to run here is our package type unmanaged at the end of it um, generally this can be left out um, it's an optional parameter but in this case we will specify it explicitly so we hit run on there we can see that it basically packages all that up again we get a small warning there about maybe something that's not quite right uh, we can sort of disregard it for the purposes of this video then we go back onto our folder on here we can see we've got our demo solution um, zip file which is basically ready to go we can actually then get this deployed out into our environment of choice so the solution packager tool is something that every developer needs to be aware of it's generally something that you'll want to be using day in day out you always want to try and get your um, various different power platform solutions into a source control system so that you can have that traceability over what's being built out and at the back end of it introduce some automation around your deployment Evidently, running these type of commands manually each time you make a change can be a bit of a drag. So what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to show you how you can completely automate this end-to-end -end using Azure DevOps uh, and a series of build tasks and things like that so that you don't even need to sort of run these commands. You can just leave it running during the night and all of your changes will be automatically grabbed from the system. So tune in next time when we take a look at that. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, uh, feel free to follow, like, subscribe, do all the stuff that you generally do on YouTube. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care.